Well, hey there, YouTube. Matt M. Roy back again. Yesterday, I was given this laptop from a uh, client of my dad's. She said that it had suffered a uh, spill. And I turned it on, and it seemed to boot up, but one thing I noticed is the keyboard was really, really sticky. And sure enough, when I look closer, there was actual goo from some type of either coffee or tea spillage on there. So I didn't even bother taking the keyboard out. Yesterday I just got some uh, Q-tips and some rubbing alcohol, and I went in between the keys and basically cleaned everything out. Because the spill didn't seem too bad, and it was mostly concentrated, at least I thought initially, over by the shift and the enter key. Well... The keyboard itself is actually clean right now. This thing will focus. Um, you can see there that everything's moving freely. So this isn't the problem. I decided to take it apart a little bit more, and sure enough, you can see the, the rem remnants of some of the spill. Got a little bit here, quite a bit here on, um, I believe it's a heat sink, or at least the top portion of it. Uh, nothing too much around the keyboard connector or the CMOS battery. So obviously it wasn't too bad, but the problem I'm having now is with the uh, touchpad here. Um, when it's booted in the operating system, the touchpad is sticking on, and it keeps creating multiple windows automatically. So there's a problem pro most likely with the left click button. Now you can see that it is moving freely, so it's probably just some of this spillage has gotten in there and kind of shorted out some of the uh, components. What I tried doing yesterday was I took one of these flathead screwdrivers and I just kind of went in there around there and cleaned as much of the junk out as I could. You can see I'm still getting some junk out right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead, I've already removed all the screws from this laptop, go ahead and clean up here, then I'll show you guys inside, and when we're all done, provided it works, I'll go over the specs and tell you guys everything that it One had. One quick thing to note, whenever you're taking it apart, always be really careful. When I came to this section, I noticed that it wasn't coming apart easy, because I was actually prying it apart with the little screwdriver. So I looked on the bottom, and I noticed that I had missed a screw. When you're working on laptops, that it's extremely easy to do. So when you're trying to take them apart, pry the edges, but don't pry too hard. If something feels like it's still screwed in, then chances are it probably is. Well, as you guys can see, I have the display totally removed. And I still was having trouble getting this bezel off. There was still a screw hidden somewhere. Well, look at that, guys. Remember I told you, you really got to hunt for some of these screws. And there it is right there. So just be extra cautious when working on these laptops because you'll wind up breaking something very easily. Now, I actually like the way this display works. If you notice, it only has pretty much three connectors. It has the actual monitor screen connector, which gets fished through this little well here. You have the connector there, and then you have the ground, which goes right into here, it uses like a grounding screw. And then you have the two Wi-Fi leads, because in these laptops, or in most nowadays, the uh, antenna for the Wi-Fi is actually around the entire bezel of the screen. So. I'll give Dell kudos on this one. I do kind of like the way they design this. It's fairly easy to take apart. Um, here we have the fan, the cooling fan, which I have cleaned. I really, I'm really, i going to go downstairs and blow this out before I put this back together. You can still see there's some of that little spillage. I think it was coffee that somebody spilled on this. So let me get down to the nitty gritty. I want to get down to this touch pad that's giving me trouble. We'll see if we can get her all right. Well, you can see I finally have the track pad out, and you can also see there's definitely some of that spillage on there. Uh, these are the two buttons, the uh, left and right mouse uh, buttons. And on that circuit board, there's definitely, uh, I don't know what this is. This must just be the, uh, when the stuff hardened, whatever they spill, just kind of put this little... It's kind of gross, actually. <laughs> it's a little powdery residue. So I'm going to go ahead and clean this up, make sure all the traces look good, which I think they do. Then we'll go ahead and put this thing back together. Before I do that, I wanted to show you guys what the motherboard actually looks like. I know there's a lot of videos on YouTube about these, but for those of you that watch my channel, this is what the motherboard in a Dell Inspiron uh, 1501 looks like. Um, you can see right here, this is the... Um, PCM-CIA card slot, have the wireless card here, 
Uh, CPU is right over here. I believe this is the GPU, a uh, graphics processing unit. This is where the keyboard plugs in. Right here you have your standard uh, CR2032 CMOS battery, which I will be changing because I believe this is original of this laptop, and this laptop, as you can see, is from 2006, so that definitely needs to be changed. And uh, again, just the cooling fan there, which I am going to clean off. So all in all, a fairly easy laptop to take apart. Again, I'm going to go ahead and clean this up, and we'll put her back together and see if she works this time. All right. Well, as you guys can see, I've gotten it uh, about halfway back together. I have the motherboard and the bezel back on, and I did reattach the monitor. Spent a lot of time cleaning this all around here. One thing that did concern me is I noticed um, on some of the copper part parts near the traces, there were some burn marks, which probably means it did short out. Um, so I'd give this about a 50-50 chance of actually working. Um, if I still have trouble with this touchpad, I may try to order one on eBay, or what I will do is I'll just disable this in the BIOS and just, of course, use an external mouse. So the keyboard is all clean. Like I said, I did that yesterday, and I actually went through it again just a few minutes ago to make sure there was, was no gunk left inside, and it seems to be pretty good. No, none of the keys are sticking. So I'm going to go ahead and finish putting this together, and we'll give this... These are the original sticks of RAM that came in it. They're both uh, 256 megabytes of PC2 4200 RAM. Well, that only gives me 512, which is definitely not going to be enough. So I was searching through my closet, and I came across two of these one gig sticks of PC2 5300 memory. I'm going to go ahead and give these a try. I hope they work. I know that some of these older ones without a BIOS update they would only use the DDR2 at the 4200 speed but I'm hoping that it'll work without a BIOS update. So I'm going to go ahead and put those in and we'll be ready to fire. Another strange thing I noticed is for some reason even though they have two screw holes for the wireless card this one here is not populated. There's actually no screw and nothing, no uh, stand to put a screw in. Not very crazy about that because the wireless card actually connects here through a little um, square connector on the motherboard. And even though this does put it down, it doesn't take much to jar this loose. So hopefully I won't have a problem with that in the future. If it does become a problem, I think what I'm going to do is glue a little post here to just keep it down because this side is connected to the motherboard via just a regular uh, wire, just some proprietary connector. But this side uses like a circuit board connector, so this needs to stay tight in there. But we'll see what happens. All right. I'm going to go ahead and put the battery back in. I have not put all the screws back in this laptop yet because if I need to take it apart again, you know, that'll just make it a little bit easier. I'm going to go ahead and boot this up real quick and see what happens. Hopefully she turns on. That's a good sign. Now it's going to tell me invalid configuration information. Now that's because I replaced the CMOS battery. So let me run setup real quick and then it should boot in the window. Okay, configuration information has been entered. Let's see if she boots. I don't hear any odd beeping or anything, so that's a good sign. It is taking a little longer than it did before. Uh-oh. Sounds like we may have a fail here. It's funny, it didn't do that before. It would actually do that once it was booted into Windows. Still see... <laughs> still see a little bit of dust there. But it's definitely not from the spill because every little bit of that spill has been cleaned up. But like I said, I did notice a problem with some scorching on the board itself. You know what I think I'm going to do, guys? Because I don't think the problem is in the trackpad anymore. I think the issue is the keyboard itself. I think I'm going to do what UXW Bill has actually done a couple of times and run this thing through the uh, dishwasher. I know that's not the recommended way to clean it, but without having to buy a new one, that might be the best way. Well, as you can see, it did boot up. I mean, it seems to be working normally, but that sound is definitely not normal. And I didn't hear it exactly like that before. Like I said, it was in when it was in the operating system, and I know before the problem was the trackpad sticking. 
but that kind of beep 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 right at post usually means there's the issue with the keyboard itself okay so I'm downstairs now you can see the keyboard is out and it's getting ready to go in the dishwasher but I wanted to protect the cable so I took a little sandwich bag wrapped it around the uh, connection cable and motherboard and put a rubber band on there that way no water is actually going to get into the parts it shouldn't so let's go ahead and throw this in the dishwasher we have a few other things here but I'm not too worried about it I'm gonna go ahead and set it on the top here I just want I don't want it to get uh, too much of the hot water so I'm gonna just put it on the top rack because the bottom one is where a lot of the hot water shoots up and I don't want to chance it melting the keyboard so we're going to go ahead and close this and we'll see what happens guys all right I pulled the keyboard out of the dishwasher let it go through for about 10 minutes you could let it go longer but my dishwasher tends to get too hot so I didn't want to chance it as you can see it didn't do any damage to the keyboard which is nice and for the most part the connector stayed nice and dry. So next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my mother's hair dryer out here. I'm going to go ahead and dry this off as much as I Now when you're doing this, you want to make sure you're only using cold air. The warm air could damage the uh, sensors on here if we're not careful. So I'm going to go to the bottom. Try and get that as dry as I can. I'm going to switch back and forth. Turn it over. Try to get all the water out from all the crevices. And I'll probably let it dry for another hour or so, and then we'll go ahead and give it a try. All right. So I gave it some time, and as you can see, the system is booted up. No more extraneous sounds. And check this out, guys. still booting up so it's going to take a minute but if you look at the cap locks is working uh, let's see where the num lock is on here num lock is working as well and I'm just wanted to boot up to see if we can get the uh, start button to come up here it is a little slow and I do plan on reinstalling Windows on this but now that it has two um, gigs of RAM I'll probably put Windows 7 on it but we'll see how that works. Yeah, this is a really, really corrupted installation of Windows. But um, I'm going to call this a success, guys. So again, the keyboard is working. Wish I could demonstrate here, but like I said, this, this OS installation is really, really corrupted. So I think I'm going to go ahead and install uh, Windows 7 or maybe even Linux on here. I haven't really decided. Um, again, this one is actually the Inspiron uh, 6000 series. I said this was the 1501. They use the same shell, but I think the 1501 was the AMD version. The 6000 is the Intel version because this actually has a Intel Pentium M processor running at 1.73 gigahertz. There'll probably be another video on this uh, computer. I don't want to make it too long, so I'll just make a separate video once I get the uh, operating system installed. Please remember to like and subscribe, and as always, have a blessed day everybody.